My name is Debbie Youngs and I'm the Director of Research, Accountability, and Assessment for Coppell ISD. Today I'm going to take some time to talk to you about college and career readiness now that you've received your ACT Explore results. So what does it mean to be college and career ready? Well, there are certain areas that will help you be prepared, such as mastering the core content, developing key cognitive strategies, developing learning techniques, taking ownership of learning and becoming proficient with a range of learning skills, and acquiring knowledge about college and careers. I'll be talking about each of these areas. First off, what's meant by core? Well, core refers to the courses required in high school to graduate. It's the English, math, science, social studies, world languages, and the arts. These courses are designed to prepare the learner for college. It's important that the learner understand the major concepts and structures of the content rather than just the facts and details. And the more rigorous and challenging the course, the better prepared the learner will be for college. Regardless of the core academic area, two academic skills that have repeatedly been identified as being centrally important to college success are writing and research. David Connolly has determined this. College students will be involved in writing in almost every college course. It's imperative that a learner, that a learner enter college with a strong ability to pre-write, edit, revise, and complete a final paper to be submitted for grading. Along with the organization of the writing, the final composition will need to be free of grammatical, spelling, and usage errors. Many college courses require research. We have so much information at our fingertips now, it's a necessary skill for our learner today to be able to access, filter, and evaluate the enormous amounts of available data to determine its appropriateness for the research being done. And talking about the key cognitive strategies, there are six I'll be discussing. While the learners need strong academic skills, these cognitive strategies are imperative also to be prepared for college and a career. One area is intellectual openness and inquisitiveness. This is that natural sense of curiosity. It's the desire to understand more deeply, to engage in inquiry and dialogue. This is when someone accepts feedback and questions the views and thoughts of others that really don't have a foundation of evidence and seeks out evidence to support his or her own understandings. It's a willingness to also to alter your understanding when evidence warrants and an unwillingness to accept without understanding why. Analysis is another cognitive strategy. This kind of goes along with the research skills I mentioned earlier. This is the learner's ability to take in data and information and evaluate it for accuracy and relevancy to the task at hand. It's the learner's ability to assess the quality of the data. Through analysis, the learner is able to compare information or data and summarize the findings. Reasoning is when a learner is able to talk about their position on a topic with a well-reasoned discussion. The student is able to take opposing points and either defend their position with evidence or accept the opposing point due to the evidence given during the discussion. Another key cognitive strategy is interpretation. This is when the learner is able to make sense of information even if there are conflicting points. Communication is another key cognitive strategy. It's the learner's ability to organize and construct their message into a format that allows for a meaningful conveyance of information, whether it's oral, written, or multimedia format. With precision and accuracy, the learner knows the amount of accuracy and precision needed for a task. As the task is repeated, the level of precision and accuracy increases. Key learning techniques are also imperative for, the, for being college and career ready. One area is managing your time. Whether you use a paper pencil calendar or if you use your iPhone or some other device to have a calendar, it's imperative that you learn to begin to manage your time. When something is due, you need to back up a few weeks and think, okay, this is the first part I need to do, now's the second part, and go ahead and create your timeline so that you can finish the project or the task at hand in plenty of time. Taking notes is another learning technique. 
When you take notes, it's report important to remember that you don't write everything that the speaker is saying. There's simply not enough time. What you do need to do, though, is write down those main ideas and a few details underneath each one. When it comes to studying for a test, just like managing your time, create a study schedule. Start well in advance to go over those notes so that you're not trying to cram, cram at the very end. There's no way to take a test well if that's what you're doing. A study group is another great example. Um, sometimes they help out too because you can bounce ideas and thoughts off of each other. Remember to take breaks as you study for tests to refresh yourself. Changing environments helps too. And as you study, learn the general concepts and then add the details. Don't try to memorize it just from the beginning to the end in looking at your notes. When you feel like you're prepared for the test, have someone else test you just to make sure you're completely ready. Another learning technique is memorization. Use mnemonics or develop some type of technique to help you memorize information. When you read strategically, you're picking out the main ideas and ascertaining the details that support it. Learn collaboratively. Very few people in today's society work as an island. Most jobs involve working with others. Begin to learn that skill now where you can work and enjoy the give and take of learning collaboratively. Using technology is another learning technique. You'll be using technology to research, to collaborate, to create products, and for a variety of other types of tasks. To be college and career ready, you need to take ownership. Take ownership of your own learning. Make sure you know yourself. Be self-aware. Find out your interests, your passions, your skills and ambitions. What is it that you love? Many colleges have a counseling center and they can administer an interest inventory. Set goals. Know what it is you need to achieve based on your self-awareness. Be motivated. Have the mindset to achieve your goals. Be determined to achieve them. Persist. Don't give up. Especially when something doesn't come easily, just keep trying until you succeed. Monitor performance. Know how well you're really doing. Engage your true skill level. Ask for help. Know when you're stuck. Then get help. Don't view this as a weakness. Advocate for yourself. Show self-efficacy. Learn how to control the things you can control. Then control them. College and career knowledge is also important when you're preparing to be ready for college. There are some certain norms and cultures of college. For instance, if you need help or need a teacher to slow down or explain, it's up to you to assert yourself and ask. Some college classes move quickly and you need to take the initiative to keep up. If you're behind or miss class, it's up to you to visit a teacher on office hours or get assignments and notes from a friend. Academic honesty is very important because college attempts to develop the whole person, intellectual, ethical, cultural, social, and physical. Therefore, successful college students value their good ethics and refuse to attach their names to any work, including any individual or group homework assignments, research papers, or tests that is not truly their own work. The consequences of dishonesty can be very severe. The teacher-student relationship is primarily academic though a teacher may be friendly and welcoming to students. Places like the college library really are for quiet work and study. Other students might not appreciate it if the library becomes too loud. Be punctual and put your cell phone away. Unless the educator needs for you to use your phone for a task or an assignment, it needs to be put away. Think about your career options and the requirements. Once you think about some careers, Go online and look at the requirements that are needed to, be, uh, to, to do that career. How and when do you apply for college? College Board for SAT has so much information about applying for college. It also talks about tuition and financial aid. With regard to tuition and financial aid, there are three different types. Loans that have to be repaid, grants and scholarships that don't have to be repaid, 
employment programs such as work study that allow students to earn money and gain job experience while still in school. Think about what college is the best fit for you. Is it a small college where the classes are smaller and you can get to know the teacher better? Or is it a large college where you might be in a class of 350 or maybe a middle-sized one? And what do colleges look at when making admission decisions? Well, they look at the courses you've taken, the grades you've received, your class rank. They look at your standardized test scores like the SAT or the ACT. Lots of applications have personal statements or essays that are required. Colleges also look at recommendations. They'll look at your extracurricular activities and some may require interviews. What does Explore tell you about college readiness? When I post this, I'll also be posting a link to the actual PowerPoint. This is a hyperlink which will take you to the ACT website about Explore and it provides, provides quite a bit of information about understanding your Explore results. In addition, you would have taken home three different items about Explore. You would take home your testing results, the actual test booklet so you can look at the questions that you missed and determine the correct answers, and you'll also be bringing home a booklet that explains your scores. So now, what are the next steps? Well, you will have more opportunities to take further assessments. In 10th grade, there's a chance there'll be the PSAT, the ACT plan, it is another possibility. In 11th grade, there's another possibility, the PSAT, and then you can take the SAT and the ACT um, as many times as you'd like. You just go to their website and register. It's important when preparing for college to choose rigorous courses. Evidence clearly supports that when you take rigorous courses, it better prepares you for college readiness. View the SAT and ACT websites. These three, three links uh, you can go to once the PowerPoint is posted and gather more information about becoming prepared for college. And practice. Practice the key cognitive strategies, the key learning techniques, and the key learning skills. You still have plenty of time before it's time to start college, so begin practicing those now or continue practicing them. College knowledge. Begin thinking about your college options now and visit college campuses. Think about the type of college that's right for you. Take some time to tour some colleges. Set up tours with them. If you call the student departments, they will help you. And you can also talk with your school counselor for guidance in the process. Here are some resources about articles that I used in preparing this PowerPoint. In addition, there are some links here that will take you to more information about college and career readiness. Best of luck in your, in your readiness for college and a career.